everyone, it's Jessica. Thanks for joining with me today. So I have a favorite new stamp set from the January and February Close to My Heart catalog. It is this one, the Snow Mice. And I've just been going through all of my photos looking for anything I might be able to use so that I can play with that new stamp set. I found these three pictures here of my cats. They were looking out the window at the kids who were playing in the snow and they just looked so jealous that the kids were outside having all sorts of fun. So I thought that I would scrapbook those today with this new stamp set. So going through my Make It From Your Heart pattern books, I found this one here in volume five. It is a double page layout, but I'm gonna use just the right hand side. And I've gone ahead and pre-cut my circles and one of the pieces of paper that I will need for this layout. Um, I'm not sure exactly what else I'm gonna pull in here besides the stamp set and then just these papers I've already cut. Um, I wanted to kind of lay it out because there isn't really a lot of color in these pictures. Um, they, they weren't very good pictures and plus they kind of had a little bit of a filter on them. So they're just very gray. And that is what inspired me to use that journey color there, which is the cardstock that the photos are sitting on. Um, and I just combined it with one of the patterns from the mix and paper collection. I'll show it to you here. It looks almost like it has some snowballs on it and I thought that was perfect. Um, but that's in a gray mink color. And then I also have a piece of Harbor cardstock. So I'm looking at it and thinking that it definitely needs a little bit more color. So I went back into that mix in paper collection and I pulled off this uh, ballerina pink colored zip strip. And I think I'll probably trim that down and layer it down here at the bottom of that journey piece. And then since I have introduced that ballerina color, I went ahead and cut myself a couple of photo mats and that'll be just one extra little peak of pink in this layout. And then I'll probably put some pink in my mice when I go ahead and color those stamped images. So before I put anything down, I am going to grab my coordinating ink colors and just swipe across the edge of the paper to edge distress all of them. And I will do uh, the coordinating color with the color of cardstock. So now that I've done that, I'm looking at these little half inch, half circles here, and I think that they still need a something extra to make them pop. So I'm gonna pull in my sewing machine and just put a little bit of stitching around the edge of them. Now, I do love the look of stitching, whether that's hand stitching or machine stitching on my projects, um, but I feel like I'm still kind of new to the machine stitching, and I always get a little nervous every time I pull my sewing machine out. Um, and I always get worried that I'm gonna ruin my paper. Uh, it did work out perfectly fine this time, but one thing I have learned along the way is rather than trying to sew the pieces together, like putting those half circles onto my 12 by 12, page and then sewing them, it's a lot easier to just sew the little individual papers by themselves and then no one will ever know that they're not actually sewn down to the entire layout. It's much easier to manipulate the paper that way. So I'm going to go ahead and start kind of laying things back out so I can see I feel like there's a lot of white space down here, so I'm gonna grab a blending brush and my Ballerina ink pad, and I think I'm gonna put a little wash of pink color coming out from the bottom of these circles here. So I'll just kind of build that up. I'm gonna slide this up so I can start you know, in a hidden spot and then gradually bring that color out. And I think that that's just gonna be another way to bring in that pink um, and tie it all together. So I will go ahead and do that actually in three different spots. So here, and then I'll put it up in the top right corner and then also over to the right side of that Harbor Colored cardstock. While I'm adding that ink, I just keep pulling the papers back down into place so that I can see if I have enough color down on the paper. The one thing I like about this technique is it really does give you a lot of control that you can build up the color and uh, really control how dark it is and how much is showing. So I'll just keep moving them and checking them until I like it. And then I thought it would be fun to take the two um, snowflake stamps that are on that Snow My stamp set and just stamp those in that ballerina ink as well, um, right in the part where I have added that ink blending. So we'll have a little bit of pink snow kind of showing in three different corners of the layout. And I think I'll do, um, there's one that's a snowflake and one that kind of looks like an asterisk. And once I've got that done, I'll go ahead and start gluing all of these papers down. 
Now, one thing that I did do uh, a while ago is um, I was making the same pattern layout and I cut the circles on my Cricut. And as you can see, it's not a full circle for either of these. And so what I did, there are measurements in that layout book, um, is I just kind of created a uh, project in my Cricut design and then I saved it and named it with this Make It From Your Heart Volume 5 uh, pattern number 18. And that way, anytime I go to recreate this pattern, I just can cut those circles and not waste a bunch of paper by cutting them as a full circle, but they just already go ahead and cut at the halfway point exactly where they need to be. So that's a little tip for you if you are working from a pattern book um, and you've got some specific shapes that you need to use, uh, save it as a project in your Cricut Design Space. Okay, I want to do a little bit more with that journey color because I love it and it's really kind of my big pop of color uh, to bring to these gray photos. So I have this journey colored shimmer uh, trim and I think I'm going to put it here with that pink zip strip that I've got going on. Um, but then I thought, well, maybe it was a little too thick. So I cut myself a 1 8 inch strip of ballerina cardstock and I'm just going to layer that over the top. So I kind of have a lot going on down there at the bottom of that cardstock piece. Okay, now I've gone ahead and stamped my mice in the intense black ink and given them some time to dry and really soak into the paper. And then I will use my tri -blend markers just to go through and color them. I know you can't really see a whole lot of this. I am not an expert colorer by any means, but I do love using these markers because they make it so easy to just kind of add some different depth and dimension by using the three different shades of the same color. And then also I've been using that brown gray color and a blending brush just to um, color in the mice on their fur, that part itself. And then I did um, also die cut out three extra, or I'm sorry, two extra pieces of each of the mice shapes. So that way I can glue them together and stack them up. This has really been a favorite of mine in recent months. Um, I like it much better than foam tape. For one, it's a little bit more economical. I don't go through quite as much foam tape as I used to. And also I like how solid it is. It just feels really sturdy and uh, almost makes your stamped and die cut images feel a little bit more like a chipboard kind of piece rather than just a piece of cardstock. So I'll get all of those glued together and then I will put them underneath my acrylic black just to kind of hold them down while they're gluing. And then it is time to figure out where exactly to put each of these guys. There was one more uh, mouse on the stamp set. He's skiing and he's really cute too, but I thought that these three worked out perfectly because for one, I have three children and you can see them in the window in that middle picture. And we weren't doing any skiing in the backyard, but we were definitely uh, sledding and I'm sure there were probably a couple of snowballs being thrown. So I picked these three mice to go on my layout. And I'm just looking for where I can put them next to those three pink spots uh, so that I can create that visual triangle. I'm not really sure about this guy here, but I do like the placement of the mouse with the big snowball and the one with the sled. So I did also um, prepare a couple of snowflakes. This is from a retired thin cut set um, that just cuts out these really beautiful snowflakes. And I did it in white glitter paper. And I, I think I'm probably going to try to work those snowflakes in, although it really did take me a long time to figure out exactly which snowflakes to use where. I've got these two points figured out and glued down, and now I just need to figure out this third point down here. That was the one that really kind of stumped me the most. Um, I thought that maybe it would be easier to figure out the title before I glued any of those ones down, and that way I could make sure everything was going to fit. So I grabbed some mink colored cardstock and my simple serif uppercase thin cuts and I cut out the word fun and I did glue a couple of layers of that together. And then I think I'm going to do a little bit of masking uh, from one of the sentiments on the stamp set and it's going to say snow much fun. So the stamp set really does lend itself well to making cards because there's like thanks so much and wishing you happy winter days and winter greetings and things like that. Um, but it's very easy just to do a little bit of masking and then that way you can also use it on a layout as well. 
So you can see I did practice um, a little bit on a scratch piece of Harbor Colored cardstock. I wanted to make sure that my white pigment ink was going to show up okay and look fine before I stamped it all the way down onto my layout. This is definitely kind of a scary moment, right? Anytime you go to stamp directly to your page um, and it's like, oh, please don't, please don't mess up. Please be okay. I'm going to put that foam piece down there just to make sure it stamps well. And it did turn out okay. Um, I wish I would have gotten a little bit more white in the word snow, but it, no mistakes. So we'll, we'll take that as a win. Okay, and then the last few things I'm going to do to the layout here, I've grabbed my clear shimmer brush. One of my favorite things to do with these little mice is to use the clear shimmer brush on um, this mouse here on the little fur ruff going around the uh, face and then also at the bottom of the coat. Um, I don't color that part in, I just leave it white and then I go over it with the sparkle just to kind of give it a little shine. And then I also like to use the clear shimmer brush on all of the snowballs. So I just kind of put a little bit at the bottom of them um, to make the snow look like it is glistening. So I'll do that with the clear shimmer brush. And then, you know, two of the mice here have cute little pom-poms on the tops of their winter hats. And so I'm gonna grab some silver colored stickles and just kind of give them a little bit of sparkle for their hat pom-poms. And then try very carefully not to stick my hand in that and ruin it while it is drying. And that is going to be the end of it. Um, I guess they could have come in with a couple of clear sparkles or gems or something like that. And that would have been fun too. But I'm going to leave it like this. I'll have to figure out where I'm going to put my journaling. If it'll be over here um, on that one circle or maybe somewhere down at the bottom. Um, I did stamp one more little bit of sentiment up here. It says happy winter days. And again, I did a little bit of masking. Um, I had a little bit of extra ink that didn't quite get covered up when I did that masking. So I'm just grabbing my white gel pen and using it almost like a whiteout um, and going over anything that I didn't want to show. So there are a couple of spots even on my coloring where I went outside the lines. <laughs> um, so if you just use that white gel pen, it really works beautifully to cover all of that up. I'll pick the layout up here in just a second and show you how that works. Um, but that's a trick that I do quite often. So it's a way just to kind of catch your mistakes and cover them up. And you can see here, you can't even really tell, um, especially by the time it dries. Uh, and that way, if you ever color outside the lines or anything, no one will ever be the wiser. It'll just look like it's perfectly colored. So I love these snow mice. Like I said, they are definitely my favorite from the new January and February catalog. I'm just looking for anything that I can do to um, play with them. And so I, I've been pulling all of my winter photos. And as I am making this video, it has started snowing outside. So I think that they are bringing some winter good luck. All right, thanks for being here with me today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed watching. As always, happy crafting, and I will see you next time. Bye.